Hi, I'm Kat from the column According to Kat on livinginbelgrade.com. And today I'm at one of my favorite places, Supermarket, located in the Dorchel area. And I have with me my friend Jovana, who is a Serbian born and raised here, but spent 11 years in the U.S. and has since returned back to live here again. Hi, Jovana. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Oh, so what, um, how old were you when you moved to the U.S.? Where did you move to exactly? Mm -hmm. I was almost 18. I, I went to U.S. Uh, maybe about a month before I turned 18 to finish my last year of high school as an exchange student. You know, oh, okay. it's a very common way of how people go. And I went there to try to have my own ex American experience. <laughs> I've never I've never been to U.S. before that, but my dad lived in U.S. for about 10 years. Okay. And I kind of grew up on his stories about America this and America that. So oh. I wanted to see how things really are in America. So yes. I went and my idea was to stay only one year there. Okay. Just to finish the last year of high school and return back to Serbia to go to university here. Okay. But unfortunately, I graduated high school in 99, which is when the oh, bombings yes. were happening in Serbia. And I kind of could not really go back. Yeah. As I was walking and getting my high school diploma, there were still bombs falling all oh, over my, my country. Gosh. And I decided to go to college there for one year and then come back and that one year turned into another year and one more and total of 11. <laughs> wow. And where were you initially? Which city did you go to? I was all over the United okay. States. My first three years I lived um, in a part of America which very few people see and especially very few people from Serbia go to see because everybody who goes from here to America usually goes to New York and San Francisco and few other big cities and everybody has a very clear <laughs> picture of what America really is and I really don't think that is the case. I lived in Alta, Florida. Oh, okay. I lived um, an hour away from Tallahassee, hour away from Panama City, hour away from Dothan, Alabama. It wow. has uh, one blinking light, one church, oh, and no, God. four churches and one Chevron, the oh, gas station, and wow. that was my first experience. I lived in that part of the U.S. for three years. Wow. After that, I lived in Boca Raton, Florida, which is a much nicer area, close to Miami, close to West Palm Beach. Okay. Um, after that, I lived in East Lansing, Michigan for two years. And after that, wow. I lived in Washington, D.C. last three years. So I lived all over the place. Oh my Ask me about America. I know <laughs> yes. <it>. <laughs> yeah, so you know the, the bad side, yeah. too. You don't you didn't necessarily see the glamorized version of America. Oh, yes. I had a very different perception when I came there because the only thing you see here is Hollywood films. You yeah. don't see trailers and pickup trucks and oh my fields <laughs> and yeah. people. And yeah, right. it, was, it, was, it was a challenge. So what was your experience like there? Was it hard to be a foreigner in a different country? What do you feel like you gained from your experience? I learned a lot, <laughs> really a lot. I learned, I was the only foreign person, I was the only person with an accent in pretty much a 100 mile kilometer radius, wow. any direction. Wow. <laughs> it, was a, it was a really big challenge. I think uh, the community was not quite ready for me and I was definitely not ready for the community. I think one of the things that I learned is to be confident enough to say that I can do it anywhere and succeed. Yes. I um, pushed my limits quite a bit in those Okay. Those three years that I lived in the area, and at the moment it was I was definitely out of my comfort zone at all. Yeah. But I think one thing that I learned is to expand my comfort zone, and mm. I don't see, I don't see it. Um, I don't think that I have a comfort zone anymore because there is nothing that I don't feel comfortable in. Oh. And I think that's a very, very, very useful experience, and I think one that many of the people here don't have. Right. Okay. So when did you move back to Belgrade? I moved back to Belgrade in January of, ne of last year, so January 2010, so I've been here for a year and 10 months. Okay. Did you always intend on moving back? You didn't really see yourself as, oh, I want to go to the U.S. and, and stay there, get Absolutely. away from here. No, you, you saw Absolutely. yourself moving back. Absolutely. It was always my desire, but it was always, you know, oh, let's finish college. Well, and then after that, well, let me finish grad school. Sure. Well, after that, well, let me have some work experience. Yeah. I worked in U.S. for three years, oh, okay. and then I came back. So I always intended to come back, and now I felt it was the right time to, to come back. So I've been in Belgrade for a year and ten months now. Okay, so what do you feel so far? Have you, you don't regret the decision. Are you glad to be back? I'm very happy to be back. I don't regret my decision. And I, let, let's put it like this. I don't regret my decision for longer than two minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there are sometimes moments when I see some things and I'm like, why did I do this to myself? Right. I didn't need to do this. <laughs> but right. overall, I am super, super happy to be back. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I'm here. Oh, good. That's so nice to hear. So what do you feel that you maybe gained over in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that um, is useful mm -hmm. uh, here? 
I think I gained confidence, mm. but a really serious confidence. Not that I was unconfident before I left, mm -hmm. but confidence in my skills and in my ability to do things. Um, and okay. I gained confidence to risk and I, I gained confidence to jump. Okay. That yeah. doesn't mean that I'm not going to break my leg if I, you know, sure. if I jump, right. <laughs> but I'm still going to try to jump. <laughs> so I think awesome. confidence and the world experience and I think the ability to su succeed there mm -hmm. where I was completely alone without any support network, yeah. without any of that. I think if I made it there, I can make it anywhere. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So. so what are, um, I know you were involved a little bit, maybe politically and with some social Mm -hmm. um, initiatives. What are some of the things that you're trying to do here in Serbia? Politically, not. No, not yet. For now. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> My long-term goal is definitely I'm, I'm very interested in politics, but at the moment I don't. Next president of Serbia? Maybe? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe not next, but the one after. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, long-term goals are definitely do involve politics, okay. but there are a few more things I would like to do before that happens. Okay. Um, I'm pretty involved with a variety of initiatives right now. Um, I'm right now working or trying to set up a social enterprise that okay. will work with moms and empower them, but I would like to come and tell you about it some other time when I have more okay. news to share. Yes. I'm also pretty involved with in the Repat community. I started a group on Facebook that collects all of us who lived abroad and came back. And mm -hmm. I really started that with an intention to collect five people that I knew. <laughs> Never believed that it's going to turn into a 250 community. That's awesome. So um, we, are, we are building a small network and we are, we are maybe trying to do something and to change some of the things that some of the, uh, to change some of the things and how they are in Serbia. Okay. And I think this crowd of people who came back can really understand yes. that they are the actual advantages to living in Belgrade. Yes. Okay. Can you tell me about some of those? What do you think some of the advantages are? Well, I think they're all different for each one of us. Mm -hmm. There is not one thing, come to Belgrade because this, 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 and, sure. and this is better here and it's not good here or other, or sure. elsewhere. I think every place, every country, every city has its own goods and bads. And that Belgrade definitely has a really big share of both. <laughs> yes. For me, this is my city. Yes. And that doesn't mean that Washington was not my city. That doesn't mean that any of the other places, they're all my cities. Uh -huh. But this city is a little bit above all of the others. Okay. So is there anything that you miss from the U.S.? Of course, I miss things. I miss, first of all, I miss people. That's yeah. what I miss the most. Um, I have great friends there. I have great friends all around the world. And I wish that there is a way to collect them all in yeah. one place, yeah. just once. <laughs> that would be very, very yeah. cool. But definitely, I miss people. I miss knowing um, some of the things. I miss knowing where to go when I need to buy jeans. I miss knowing where to go when I want to buy something else. Here, I'm still a little bit lost. Yes. with some of the things. Yes. But I think what I miss the most about U.S. and especially about Washington, D.C., I lived, I worked for a nonprofit there. I was surrounded with the people who were working actively to change things around them. Okay. And when I lived in Serbia last time permanently, mm -hmm. it was during the 90s. And 90s were a horrible time for living here. Yeah. But people had a better spirit. Okay. We believed that if we fight for something, then things will change. And we, okay. there was a spirit of resistance. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, right now, I don't feel that spirit in Belgrade. Uh -huh. I feel that people are pretty apathetic. And okay. there's kind not of enough. Up. They have given up. Uh -huh. And there is not a power. There's not a feeling of having a power okay. that if I do this, I can change things. And that is maybe my main, not obstacle, but my main disappointment of okay. living here right now. So what would you maybe say to the people here? Well, how can we change that so that they, they don't have that attitude, that apathetic attitude? Well, all of the changes that have happened in the world, even the ones that have happened here, did not happen overnight. Sure. You know, they yeah. say that every overnight success was prepared for 20 years. Mm. And there is no such a thing as overnight success. There is no such a thing as an instant change. Right. I would tell them to keep on fighting. Is there... Um, is there anything that you think really, set, aside from just your heart maybe being mm -hmm. here because you were born and raised here, is there something that really sets apart Belgrade from you know, the U.S. or mm -hmm. other places in the world? Well, for me, it's the pace of the city mm -hmm. because it can be as slow or as fast as you want it to be. Okay. My friends speak on me telling me that I made... You, that I made my Belgrade experience into American experience, which is I never have time for anything and I'm always <laughs> running and I'm doing million things and all yes. of this kind of things. Yes. But I like about here that you can, that you can choose your own pace. And sure. there are moments when I, 
I usually enjoy fast life. I'm always doing a million things and I best function if there is, you know, 17 things around me and I'm doing do 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 But overall, you can choose to have a slower pace. And for me, the quality yeah. of life that comes with the ability to choose is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so as we, we've experienced, it seems that young people and even people in general, you know, are curious why we'd want to come back or why people would choose to live here. What would you say to maybe the young people who want to run away from here? I would tell them to run away. Okay. Go and see how, how things are. Yeah. I mean, there is no place, there is no ideal place in the world. Exactly. And if you have a chance to visit some other places and see how things are there, um, maybe you will know, maybe f based on that, you will know what's important to you. Yes. And then make a decision based on what's important to you. Mm -hmm. I've sacrificed many things to come back here. I sacrificed many things to leave here and go to the United States, you know? Yeah. Um, there are things that I've gained, there are things that I lost. Mm. But based on what, what important things in life are for me, I think that I made the right decision oh, of coming back. That's awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much for chatting with You're me. You're welcome. It's been Anytime. great. And thank you all for watching. Please stay tuned for more interviews and latest information on livinginbelgrade.com. Bye. Bye. <laughs>